Michael, congratulations. As far as quarterfinals go, that's a fairly routine and an easy night's work for yourself. <laughs> it looked it on paper, but far from it. I was going up on stage tonight thinking, Rob, Rob's going to smash me here. He's going to play really well. I need to do something special here tonight. I've, I've got to find the trebles pretty quick, the doubles. And that first session, it, it went to plan for me, but not for plan for Rob. And then I won the next session again 4-1. I was just thinking, the guy's missing doubles. He's missing. He's missing. You've got to step up. If you step up, you could win the game pretty comfortable. I know the score line shows it being comfy there, but Rob missed so many shots. And I just put that added pressure on myself that I didn't need to. If I would have relaxed, and maybe if Rob would have relaxed, it would have been a different game. But I'm just glad to be sat here now, and then I'm in the semis tomorrow. Now. In that semi-final, <coughs> obviously you're gonna renew your rivalry with with MVG. Do you, do you feel that? Michael is there to be got out at the moment. Again, he's not been brilliant <coughs> in the last two games. Gilding could have gone seven three up against him. Do you feel there's a real opportunity? For he's, yourself? he's probably well. I know if Michael's anything like me, he's not watched tonight. So uh, if he did, he could th think the same about me tonight. We both tried immensely hard to win the match, like so hard, and we didn't find it. But like Michael played uh, Andrew, which is is a bit methodical, a bit slow. And that's not him, he's just the way he steps up to the hockey, the way he approaches himself, and Rob's pretty the same. Like, he could take his time, or he kicks the hockey a few times. He's not the fastest player on tour, but he's pretty quick. But me and Michael tomorrow now is just going to be like in circles. Just literally, he throws, I throw, just, just going around. And he could come tomorrow with the 104, 105, and I could do the same. But we can't base anything off tonight, because I literally, I know what Michael's like, and he knows what I'm like, but forget about what's just happened. Win a semi final at the match player. Unlucky for me, he's won it three times and not won it yet, but we literally forget about what's happened tonight and it's a new game tomorrow and hopefully it's one of the best games that the crowd can see. Come Sunday, would you like to face Luke Humphreys in the final after everything you've gone through as, as Team England as well recently? I don't care, he's in the final as long as I can make the final, I don't really care. If it's Luke or James Wade. <laughs> so, I, I've not seen any results. So if it's Luke or James Wade, but as long as Michael Smith's name is on on the on the sheet on Sunday, that's all I'm bothered about. It doesn't matter who I'm playing. As long as I'm there and I get some uh, try, to give some myself some redemption from 2019. That's all I'm bothered about. You touched on redemption there. Is that still in the back of your mind that that final there? I say it all the time. I try to forget about things. I try to do things differently. I just try to focus on the day, but. You can't forget about losing the final. I've lost, what, 11, I think? 11 major finals before I won my first. I've lost two world championships before I won my first one. It's, it is hard to forget about because you, you you tell yourself, I've been here twice before, I'm going to lose. I've been here once before, I've done this before, and you lost. So it is hard. It's hard to convince yourself that it's a new game. But, yeah, just even playing Rob then, it was a bit of redemption. 2019, I was 9-0 down, didn't even hit nothing. And then I think I got it back to 11-8 or 11-9. And then I just went back to normal, but no, it's, it's one of them things, just getting used to it and I just know what's going to happen tomorrow. Me and Michael are going to be on it, we're going to be fast paced and we're going to have fun. Michael, congratulations. Cheers, Bob. Michael, how difficult is it to sort of maintain that concentration when your opponent is missing as many doubles as he did in, in some instances, you're, you're getting away with missing doubles yourself? That's normally me. Like playing darts, that's normally me where I miss three, leg, uh, three darts or a double, four darts, five darts. And I'm thinking to myself, why am I doing this? So when Rob was doing it, I was like, no, what? This is normally me, so just get on with it, just hit your double. And I think twice I missed three at tops, and it annoyed me a bit. But going backstage, I was 11, four up, I think. I was like, it could be even worse. It could be worse because Rob has missed a lot, and I was just taking my chances. It could be very close, or he could have been in front. And just trying to tell yourself, no, what? Just all your own throw now. It doesn't matter what he does on his. Make sure you uh, uh, make sure you contest with his throw. Hit the one forties, the one eighties, which I wasn't very good at tonight, but I just wanted to make sure I was with him every single time. But then on my throws, for just bury him, just bury him out the out the water, just do everything you have to do. But make sure you can test his own. And I think I did that pretty well tonight when I got such a good lead. How much more will the levels need to go up against Michael tomorrow? Night? What was my average? Ninety-five. Uh, about twelve points. <laughs> has to, I think Michael's going to come out uh, I can average 107, 108 I know I've not done that in the match play before but Michael's going to come out tomorrow all guns blazing, he has well, both of us have we have had good games every single time I don't think you've ever seen a bad game between us 
and that's what I need tomorrow. In my head, I need at least 12 points, but on the average, get the 107 and the 108. And that's what I was thinking tonight, but it didn't happen. I did, so hopefully going in tomorrow, I'll think about that, and hopefully Michael doesn't find it, and I do. Lots of players have talked over the years about what, and Michael himself, about, about fear when playing Mark Van Gogh. Is that anything that's there, do you think, now, and do you think that's changed over the years? <sighs> How long has Michael been on tour? I think 20, 2008, 2009. I think I was a year before him. And I, I've always wanted to play him. Since he won the Masters, I've always wanted to play him because he came over as like the next best thing. And it took him till 2012, I think, or 2000, when he beat Merv King in the Grand Prix. Then he went nuts. But I always wanted to play Michael in the final every single game because he just tells me how far I've come or how, how much I need to do. And it's the same again tomorrow. I know I've been playing for the last couple of months where my game's coming back and coming back and coming back. And Michael's still that same player. I know he's not had the results he wanted and I've not had the results for the last 16 to 18 months. But when you play Michael and when Michael plays me, we, we, we always find the game and we always find that good spirit where he wants to rip my head off and I want to rip his head off as well. Oh, you're welcome. Michael, did it almost feel a bit like deja vu but in different roles from that 2019 final up there? Um. No, because I won. That <laughs> <laughs> was the worst thing. Uh, 2019, I was 9 0 down, I think, go back to 11 8, I think. But it's different. It happens. Rob's been playing really well. And it just happens. In, doing the interviews today, they were saying to him, well, you've, you've averaging this, you're doing that, you're playing really well. And apart from against Gary Anderson, I didn't do much against Chris. I just took my chances. And then again, against uh, Rob, I just took my chances, stepped in when I needed to. And it happens, but I know playing Michael now, it's got to be. It's, I've got to bring someone special tomorrow. You mentioned that uh, you're expecting Michael Van Gogh to come out all guns blazing. Can it be quite difficult to go from a comfortable game to a game that you're expecting to be really, really difficult one after the other? Uh, I don't know because I had a really difficult game against Dover. I didn't play my best game, and neither did Dover. But we was in like a nip and tuck game. If it was 11-9. If I would have lost the game, uh, lost that leg and it gone ten all, it could have been different then. Could have been my two, but it happens. I've I've been around too long now to start thinking about you got to do this, you got to do that. I'm under pressure, I'm under this, but you're playing Van Gogh, and as, if you put that back in your mind, every, everything comes natural then, because you know you've got to play really well then. You have to do it. Josh mentioned before that a lot of people used to fear Michael Van Gogh, but. You've beaten Michael in a world final. Do you do you think that, that fear factor is around you and people are scared of playing you on the dartboard now? No, because I always see myself as like people are happy when they draw me. Like it, it, it could be worse, you could be getting Gary Anderson, like say Van Gogh, and you could be getting Luke Humphrey. So when they get me it's like they're happy to get me but show them why they shouldn't be happy. So I know Van Gogh in now he's probably he's probably thinking Rob Cross is probably the better player in this tournament. And now he's got me, he might think that, but I know what Michael's going to get. He knows how I can play. We're good friends on and off the hockey, but tomorrow it's going to be difficult. But his, day, his game's going to be difficult, so is mine. And you just got to think that, because so many times when I've played him, I've just let him walk over me. So now, after that World Final, I don't think I've played him much since then. So this is like a, it's a nice rematch now. Cheers, Michael. Thank you're you. You're welcome, Paul. Michael, congratulations. Cheers. Averages came out very similar on that. Obviously, the doubles were particularly on the main sticking point. Did it feel a much closer game than it actually was when you look at the score? If you look at averages, these doubles was nowhere near. Man was over 40%, I think. Yeah. So I've scored nothing like. He scored and can't finish. So at 40%, my game should be at like 104, 105. Where if I know if I'm scoring, it could be even higher. So I know I've not scored well. And I know he has, but he's not finished. So kind of like counterbalance itself and I just know like going into tomorrow now if I can get my scoring right plus with the doubles I've been doing this event it could be so much special tomorrow and obviously last time we were here after the win over Chris Dobie you spoke about how you were taking the next day or two just to prepare stay away for a match obviously you don't have that long of a break before coming back to the semi-final this time tomorrow night we might know if you're in the final or not so does your preparation change at all knowing it's a quicker turnaround no I go straight to bed <laughs> like I do every night but now I think it's better because like playing Gary I won that then I had a day off playing Chris it started to go a bit downhill day off and it's good. so now it's like literally played I don't have a day off so I've had the practice without doing like three hours on my day off 
now I've done the three hours, no day off, another three hours, and I think it might suit me now. I've been here long enough now playing like European tours where you go play four games in a row, you pro tours where you go play seven on the day, and it's it's one of them. It's better now that you don't have that day off. You you're in the tournament now. It's every single day you're playing, and which I, I think it's better for all of us, like me, Michael, Luke, and um, Weda. Because yeah, it's better for all of us now that we're in every single day now. Cheers, Paul. Thank you. Fantastic performance tonight. Obviously, going into the game, Rock Cross had 106 average coming into the match. Was there a bit of surprise with how this game turned out today? No, I say I've literally every interview I do. I say it all the time. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday. If you dwell on what you did yesterday, you can't move forward. And I didn't play well against Dober. He played really well, and maybe he was thinking about how well he played and how bad I played. It's all that happens on that day. And if he would have won and I got beat, so what? I would have been upset, obviously upset, and I would have come back to the tournament next uh, next tournament and try to get better. But you have to do it on the day. It doesn't matter what day it is, it's that day when you're playing. Records go out the window. It doesn't matter if he's beat me 20 times, I've only won one. It's on that day, and that's all I get to tell myself. What happens on the stage, it stays on the stage. And with the numerous amount of missed goals, obviously you would have gone into the game with a clear plan. Was it a case of just trying to stick to that despite all of the numerous missed doubles? No, literally my plan was one stage, just batting and scoring and check the 60s out, the 61s, the 81s, the 70s and I just couldn't score. I was just, luckily enough, I was hitting like a 140 and a 13 somewhere at the perfect time and but I was checking out everything that I left. There was a couple of legs that I was dodgy on finishing but I was doing... The last nine darts of every single leg, I was finding the right trebles at the right time and the right doubles at the right time. Michael, many congratulations. Thank you very much, mate. Cheers.